The mind has its ups and downs. And we have to learn how not to get upset by the downs or complacent about the ups. This is where patience, equanimity, combined with conviction, are important elements in the path. So on days when you're down, where the mind is just not cooperating, realize that it's a normal part of the process. The mind is a very complicated thing to train. There's a passage in the canon where an elephant trainer is talking to the Buddha, and he, he says, elephants are a lot easier to understand than human beings. He says, within the course of a few days, he gets a new elephant, and he knows all the tricks that that elephant has up its sleeves, if an elephant were to have sleeves. But with human beings, he said, human beings are a mystery, all kinds of things going on in the mind. And you just accept it as normal. The mind is not going to always respond the way you want it to. Something is going on that you may not know or may be hidden from you. And you get little glimpses here and there, like the micro-expressions on people's faces. So the best attitude to take at times like that is just to remind yourself we're here to learn. And sometimes that lesson is, well, this is what the mind is like when it's not cooperative. And it's not just a matter of patience. You want to also watch, watch, watch. What's it doing? Sometimes it'll give you little clues. If you give up and say, well, today's a bad day to meditate, or right now is a bad time to meditate, you'll never see what's actually going on. Because the mind is actually displaying all kinds of stuff for you to see. It's just a question of whether you're looking at the right spot or whether your powers of perception are subtle enough. And then focus on what strengths you do have. All too often when things are difficult, we let the difficulties get us down. We pile more difficulties on top of ourselves. So make a survey of what is going well. At least you're sitting here, you're not harming anybody. And you're not allowing yourself to be totally overwhelmed by whatever's going through the mind. And it's also a good time to learn a little bit about not-self. In other words, whatever comes up in the mind, you don't have to identify with it. Sometimes we're very responsible. Every little thought that comes up in the mind, we have to look at it, examine it, and file it away, pass judgment on it, whether it's useful or not. But for the time being, you don't have to be responsible for any of these thoughts. You have one thought you're going to hold on to. You just want to stay alert in the present moment. If you can stay with the breath, try to notice where the breath is in the midst of all this and just hang on. And as for anything else that comes by, just learn how to get out of the way. And John Fuang had a student who was, who'd had cancer. And after one of her operations, she, they gave her radiation treatment. And she discovered that she was allergic to the anesthetic. So the doctors were stymied. And she said, well, can you do it without the anesthetic? And they said, the pain is intense. And she said, well, I'm a meditator. And so they, they tried it, and she was able to get through it. She said she was exhausted at the end because she was using her powers of concentration just to focus, 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 and not get, and not allow herself to have any reaction to the pain. And afterwards, John Fuang went to visit her and asked her how it went. And she explained. He said, "Well, you can't just use concentration; you also have to use your discernment. One is seeing that the pain is inconstant." 
even though there's a steady stream of these little pain packets. Each little pain packet does go away, go away, and before it's replaced by another one. But the other thing is just get out of the way. Don't have a you in there that's experiencing the pain. That has to get involved with the pain, that has to be responsible for the pain. She said the next time she underwent the treatment, it was a lot easier. It didn't require so much physical and mental energy. The insight there was a, a way of making things, you might say, more efficient, You're not expending so much energy just fighting things off. You learn how to get out of the way. So when thoughts come in to disturb you, just get out of the way. Think of yourself as a large window screen. The thoughts are like the breeze coming through the screen. The screen doesn't catch the breeze. It's right there. It doesn't take responsibility for the breeze. It doesn't have to get involved with the breeze at all. It's just right here, right here, right here. And then you may ra rather not have that breeze of thoughts coming through. But just being the screen puts you in a better position. You're a lot less involved in having to take care of them, because if you don't get involved in the thoughts, they have to pass away on their own. This is a useful thought to keep in mind when you're meditating in an area where there's a lot of noise. I learned at one time in Bangkok there was a place I was staying, a monastery in Bangkok, and I didn't realize it, but right outside my window there was a little store that opened up at 4 a.m. to serve rice porridge to the little tuk-tuk drivers and had a big boombox. And so in the evening they, they had the boombox on, and then in the morning the tuk-tuk drivers were coming through. And I found it was, made it a lot easier just for me to get out of the way, i.e. just the thoughts about the noise, let them go, let the noise, let it go, whatever, anything had to do anything at all with the noise, just let it go, let it go right through. It made it a lot easier. Didn't have to expend so much energy in fighting off the noise. Another time we were camping in Arches National Park. We had the campground to ourselves. It was November. We thought we had it to ourselves, and then somebody showed up late at night, and again, they too had a boombox. And that was just a screen for the sound to go through. You can apply the same approach to your thoughts. They're going to rise, and you just stay there as a screen. Let them go through, go through. And after a while, when you learn how to step out of the way, you can begin to watch them. And you begin to see where in the body a particular thought tends to gather up tension. little knots of tension that correspond to the thought. This is how a thought takes hold. If you can sense where in the body it's happening, you can just breathe right through it. Make your screen a screen of all the different breath channels in the body. Make sure there are no knots in the screen. As soon as you see a little knot forming, just breathe right through it. Open up the flow. And that's all you have to do. It's an important element in the practice is learning how to do things more efficiently, figure out where you're expending unnecessary energy. Then the meditation gets a lot easier. And this is what practice is all about. If you learn how to play a musical instrument, you realize this is a lot of what practice is. You do the same scales over and over and over again, and after a while you begin to realize that you're doing them in a clumsy way. There's a more efficient way of doing it. There's a smoother way of doing it. It's not just the time you put in, but it's also the way you use your powers of observation to look for where there's unnecessary energy being expended. You're taking on too many battles. You're trying to manage too many things all at once. 
what things do you not have to be responsible for that you can just let go and they'll, they'll go away on their own. As with the breath, sometimes we feel we have to push and push and push the breath to get it to go through the body. But that's not breath you're pushing, you're pushing the blood. The flow of the breath energy through the body doesn't involve any pushing at all. It's just a matter of relax, 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 allow, 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 as the breath comes in and the breath goes out. You try to catch for any areas in the body where you're tensing up even the least little bit around the breath. So the important principle here is that you learn how to be observant. And learn how to ask the right questions. Sometimes being observant means observing the mind when it's not in a good position, where it's just got a lot of things bubbling up. Like whack-a-mole, all these little moles coming out of the holes. And then you realize, why do I have to play whack-a-mole? Just walk away from the game. And you stay with the breath channels in the body, you stay with whatever you find is a good vantage point. Then after a while, the things will begin to calm down on their own. You don't have to whack any of the moles at all. And part of the mind may say this is very, very irresponsible. But meditation, like any battle, is learning to choose your battles. What are the important battles to fight? And part of being a responsible warrior is realizing that some battles don't have to be fought. They're just a waste of, waste of energy. And that way you can concentrate on the ones that really do matter. So keep watching.